my god. First let's bust the myth. Can you actually fry your USB port or computer with a microcontroller? The surprising answer is that yes, you can damage or even destroy a computer with a badly wired up microcontroller. So if you want to avoid frying your computer's USB port or destroying your entire computer while messing around with microcontrollers, then this is the video for you. These tips will hopefully save you an expensive computer repair bill. Incidentally, this advice is pretty generic when it comes to microcontrollers, so the advice will be the same regardless of whether you're using an Arduino, ESP32, Raspberry Pi, or other microcontroller. Most incidents of computer damage I've read about are almost always because the person building a device has used an external power source as part of the device they've been building. This type of device could include something that has hundreds of LEDs or something that has to power a very large motor. So if you're hooking up your microcontroller to a battery or anything powered from the mains, then be extra careful. Again, anything with a motor is higher risk than a device that just uses simple sensors. What's much more likely to happen is a bad connection will fry one of the sensors or output devices you're using. Even with these, however, I've personally not knowingly fried an LED display or sensor by hooking up the power line to the wrong connector. Having said that, let's be extra cautious and look at some ways of minimising the risk of a bad electrical connection frying our computer. The first tip is that if you have two or more computers you can hook up to a microcontroller device then it's probably sensible to use the least valuable computer. Microcontroller doesn't generally need a very powerful PC, so maybe this is a good use for that old laptop you have lying around the house. The second tip is to not connect a microcontroller directly to your PC, but to always connect it via a USB hub. I would strongly recommend you always use a USB hub if you're using a laptop like my HP Spectre here. It's a brilliant laptop, but a huge flaw is that it only has a single USB Type-A port. By comparison, my desktop PC has 12 USB-A ports. Powered USB hubs are probably a better choice, and I like this one that has individual on-off switches for each port. Oh, and if you have a PC with many USB ports, try to use one that's connected to the PC via a PCI card that you could easily replace should the port get damaged. I tend to use the ports at the back of my PC rather than the ones at the front, that I constantly use for other purposes. The third tip is to use a USB isolator. These are inexpensive devices that will prevent unwanted voltages from entering your computer via the USB port. They're commonly used in industry where computers are hooked up to machines running on high voltages. USB isolators are easy to find on Amazon or eBay. Check out the reviews first because both sites are awash with poor quality USB devices sourced from China. Now that we've protected the USB port and computer, is there anything else we can do? One thing you might want to try is to mock up your design on paper first, or at least on a screen. I've linked to the Wokwe website in the description. This is a cool way to get your circuits sorted out virtually. The downside I've found is it doesn't work so well for the ESP32 compared to other devices like the Arduino Uno. Another very important thing to do is to manually inspect your circuit before you turn it on. I know something I often get wrong is when I slot a connector into the wrong hole in the breadboard. Also double check your microcontroller's wiring, especially when it comes to the power lines. Finally, I'll once again remind you that using additional power sources or motors is a higher potential risk than making circuits for simple sensing controls. Thanks for watching.